If you think you're having toxic headaches, the best thing to do is going to be to change your habits and to detoxify. I'm going to be making a whole another series of videos around detoxification, but we can still talk about the detoxification headaches here. As a naturopathic medical student in the 1970s, it was the first time that I had heard about detoxification and it tended to focus with the old time naturopaths with detoxifying the liver. And this was in the days before of the widely used liver flushes that people like so much now. We didn't like the liver flushes so much then because they sometimes triggered gallbladder attacks. So what we used to use were herbal mixtures that would often be called lipotrophic factors. And that was, I, I guess, was based on the concept of assisting the liver to deal with fats and oils. Well, let's talk a little bit about the liver and how it detoxifies. If you are exposed to a toxic substance, like alcohol or pesticides or dry cleaning chemicals, those toxins go at some point will go into your liver for processing. And the liver will go through a process called conjugation. And when your liver is conjugating these chemicals, the chemicals are being altered trying to go into a, a molecular format that will allow them to be excreted from the body so they can leave. So conjugation has two phases. The first phase of conjugation is speeded up by fasting. So if you've known people that went on juice or water fasts, or just going on to uh, mono diets like eating lots of watermelon or lots of grapefruit or lots of apples. It was always with this idea of supporting detoxification by not having the body spend energy processing complex food combinations. So then what you really need though is you, you need a source of some minerals, some vitamin C, and then low carbohydrates consumptions, not so much. Protein consumption, not really involved. Fat consumption, not really involved. So you see, that's why the fasting tended to go well for this first part. But if you know people that have fasted, they frequently end up with more severe food reactions after their fast than they had before. This is because only half of the desired conjugation process to break down these chemicals has been accomplished. And the intermediary that's created can be more toxic than the original chemical was. But it's halfway processed, you see, so it's getting closer being able to leave the body. This second phase of detoxification, the second phase, I should say, of conjugation, requires that food be consumed. So we want B vitamins and vitamin C and minerals, but more than that, fasting suppresses the second phase of conjugation. The second, cons of, second kind of conjugation is supported through moderate consumption of proteins and fats, and carbohydrate metabolism isn't really involved. So when people finish a fast, this is the time when they need to instead start eating more robust foods, not necessarily in excess, and not in eating excessive amounts of carbohydrate, which tends to be what people miss. And so after a fast, people tend to be more likely to binge. That's why, as I said, we liked the lipotropic factors, was they were designed to support both of those things. So 
uh, chelidonium and geomanthus and dandelion and sunflower and uh, Russian black radish. These were all kinds of things that were just generally supportive of the liver detoxifying. And then you see after the two phases of conjugation, then the chemical can be attached to bile pigments, bile salts. And then the bile salts are what we make in the liver, store in our gallbladder, and release into the, the small intestine each time we eat fats. And the, the bile salts are there to emulsify the fats. Emulsifying means making water soluble. Because as you know, if you pour oil into water, it separates and it kind of floats on the top of, of uh, if you're making pasta, for instance, if you put olive oil into the water, it sits on top of the water because the two don't mix. The same thing happens in the intestinal tract, and when those oils are not emulsified, there's no way to digest them. So we make bile salts to release from our gallbladder or directly from the liver if we don't have a gallbladder anymore. And then that emulsifies the fat. So instead of being fat and water separated, it will be fat mixed with the water. So it's probably going to look a, a more cloudy. Because you see, wa uh, milk is a kind of emulsified fat. The butter fat and so forth after it has been uh, homogenized as it wi is widely done, it no longer can separate because the fat molecules have been broken down to where they are now water soluble. So then the classic liver flush, where you go on a mono diet for a few days and then chase it with uh, a, a cup or so of oil, and it'll often be mixed in with uh, some Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate, because the magnesium sulfate is a dilator of smooth muscles, and it makes it less likely that if, when you have that large amount of oil in the intestinal tract, you need a large amount of bile to be released into the intestinal tract to emulsify the oil. When you do that, if your gallbladder has small stones and you're making your gallbladder contract harder to get as much bile to come out as possible to try to emulsify all of that fat, then the small stones in the gallbladder will be moving down the common bile duct to go into the small intestine. And if that stone is more like the size of a pea, or if the bile duct itself, the smooth muscles in it spasm and pinch on a stone, that's what we call a gallbladder attack. And at that point, unless the smooth muscles of the uh, uh, spasming uh, bile duct will relax, unless they re relax, the, uh, you, you'll end up uh, having an emergency gallbladder removal, which will actually be to get that stone out, but it's so painful that people can't stand it. There are homeopathics to be used to dilate that. So there are some possible things, but this is why the old timers didn't like the liver flushes. But the idea is that by getting so much bile into the small intestine, the bile itself triggers the colon muscles to contract so that it will shoot out uh, the bile and whatever stool is in the area will come out fast. And then we don't have an opportunity to reabsorb the bile to recycle it, which is our normal process. The bile is what stains our poop a dark color. So if you have no bile, your poop is actually white or gray. And then as it gets darker, there's progressively more and more bile. So it triggers a diarrhea attack with all that oil and then all the bile that comes out doesn't have to be recycled, so it's a way of making the chemicals drain faster. But the liver flushes only work well if the conjugation has gone well, and the mono diet of, let's say, apples or watermelon 
is supportive of the first phase of conjugation and not the second phase of conjugation. So you can at least get rid of the current backlog of bile with the liver flush, but you're not actually supportive of the liver detox uh, biochemical actions. There's other things to consider as possible ways of detoxifying. This is where the depuration concepts have been used. This is using um, uh, saunas and colonics. And it's going to have to be a topic for another lecture. Thanks.